Measures of central tendency. So we're talking about a collection of data and looking at the middle of it. And so by definition, mean is the sum of values in a set of data divided by the number of values in a set. You probably know this as the average. The median is the one in the middle and the mode is the one that occurs most frequently. Now some distributions do not have a mode, while others could have more than one. Other concepts, outliers, something that doesn't fit the rest of the data. A weighted mean, I'll get into that a little bit more. It's when you uh, value some information more than others. And then grouped data, um, the moniker simply means that you're putting data into groups. Okay, um, just a couple of uh, tidying things here. The population mean um, is the symbol on the left and the sample mean is the symbol on the right. When we get into uh, statistics uh, further and further, you'll notice that different Greek letters uh, indicate different things. So here we go, mean, mode, and median. We're gonna compare the results of two classes that wrote the same physics exam. Let's start with class A. And because this is a sample of the whole, that's the symbol we're going to use. And the sum of the data by the number of data that we have. So the sum becomes 1215. The number of test scores we have is 17. So the average of the class is 71.5. We can do the same thing to class B. It's got 18 items, and that will shake out to be 64.4, so a lower average. The mode of class A is 71, and in class B, there are actually two modes, 61 and 80. The mean, sorry, the median, is the same as the mode of 71 and the median of class B is the two middle numbers 69 plus 73 because there's an even number of data you take the two middles divide by 2 and that's 71. So you can see that class A their data is the mean, the mode, and the median are basically all the same number at 71. Class B is a slightly different story. We have 64 as the average, while the median is the same as class A. So now let's look at the effects of outliers on this data. So you can see in class A, there's nothing that's too far from each other, but in class B, we have two low scores of 15 and 12, and that skews the average lower. So if you take these two pieces of data out, your mean now becomes 70.1, which makes sense with the rest of the data. So the outliers really is gonna affect your average more than the other two measures. The weighted mean. The personal manager for Statsville Marketing Limited considers five criteria when hiring a job applicant. The manager gives each applicant a score between one and five in each category with five as the highest score. Each category has a weighting between one and three. You can tell by looking at the chart that they value interpersonal communication skills more than the other. And in fact, in this case, references are the least valuable. So the weighted mean, or the weighted average, is formulated by the sum of the weight times the score divided by the weight. Okay, and this again, population using X bar. So this will become 2 times 4, 2 times 2, 3 times 5, 3 times 5 again, and 1 times 4. So the first number is your weight factor, 
and the second number is the score. And underneath, you simply add up the weighting factors. And this will all become 46 over 11, or a total score of 4.2. So just so you know, if you took the weight factors out, the regular average would simply be 4. So in this particular case, the weight factor only had a slight bump in the score, and that's because of those. Moving along, mean and median for grouped data. A group of children were asked how many hours a day they spend watching television. The table below summarizes their responses. And notice that it's grouped. So it's zero to one, one to two, two to three. So it's, it's grouped in hours. Okay, a child could watch 1.5 hours, 1.1, 1.3, or 2. So time is measured in an infinite number of fractions, and so we're grouping the data together. So if we determine the mean and the median for this distribution, why are these values going to be simply approximations? And the reason there's simply going to be approximation is, again, because it's grouped. So we don't use exact values. We use grouped values. Calculating the mean and the median. Let's look at the median first. There are 18 pieces of data. So when you add up the number of children, there are 18. So that is the sum. And that would fall at 17.5. So it's between two and three hours becomes your median or middle value. Now for the average, there's the fancy formula and notice that it's an approximation. So we are going to take the number of children multiplied by the midpoints divided by the number of children again. So we have our sums, and this becomes 49 divided by 18, which then equals 2.7. So the average number of hours watched by these kids is 2.7 hours. Thanks for listening.